Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Green Meadow. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here for Children's Church. We're going to take a minute to pray, and then we will get into some worship. Father God, we just thank you for this morning. Thank you for an opportunity to be here together, to be able to worship you, to be able to learn about you, and to just enjoy time in your presence, God. We just thank you and praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ, in your name. Amen. The work on the temple is coming along nicely. I'm very pleased with your progress. Thank you, my lord. While you're here, I just had a few questions for you. Sure, what is Hold it? on a second. Wait, wait, wait. Where are you going with that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it's okay. One of the stones isn't the right size. I got chisel an inch off it. No, no, no. No chiseling at the temple site. No uh, hammers either. It's just, I got just got to chisel it a little bit. Chisel it a little bit. My son, I know it makes things harder, but this is a holy place for the house of the Lord. There should be no hammering and chiseling here. Oh, okay, King Solomon. I'll just take the stone over here and chisel it somewhere. Else. Yeah, Very you do good. that. I'm sorry, my lord. I told all my men no chiseling here. It's hard to get good help these days, especially from your sister's kid. Yes, I, I could certainly understand. <laughs> anyway, what I was going to ask was... Yes. Oh, the, where are you going with that? Oh, they, they told me to bring this to the temple. It says part of the plan. That cedar wood needs cherubim, palm trees, and flowers carved on it first. Take it to the master craftsman. Not the one who carved the polka dotted palm trees and the striped cherubs last time. He tried to get a little too fancy. Go to the master craftsman who sticks to the plan. Okay, we'll do. My, my, such complications but I know it's for the Lord and it's gonna look glorious when the temple is completed yes my lord anyway I wanted to ask you if what it says here on the plans is right it says that we're gonna cover the whole inside with gold that's a lot of gold yes that is right no amount of gold is too much for the temple of the living God we will spare no expense to make it exactly as the plans say the plans were written by my father David, but they were given to him by the Lord to write down. So we will do everything they say, so that we can honor the Lord. Yes, sir. Anything for the Lord. Hey, where are you going with those? Oh, the weavers gave me these curtains of purple and scarlet. What am I supposed to do with them? The curtains? The curtains. We're not even done with the walls yet. Those weaver ladies are too fast. Well, I can see that you are very busy here. I will let you get back to this most important work. Thank you, my king. 
And just remember, we are doing this for the Lord, the mighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When it is done, we will worship Him here in this holy place. Yes, sir! And the Lord be with you. Let me show you where we're keeping the curtains until we're ready to hang them up. Let's go. Good morning, boys and girls. What a great skit about Solomon building the temple of God, a special building where God's presence would dwell. Oh, I forgot. I can take off my construction hat as we do our lesson. Now, what do you remember about Solomon from last week? Do you remember anything about him? That's right. He was a wise king who brought peace to Israel, and God used him to uh, teach others about all kinds of things in the world, and he followed God's word. That's something about Solomon. He, he studied God's word, and he obeyed God, and he followed him, and he loved God. Now, Solomon loved God so much, he wanted to do a special project for God. And this special project was to build the temple. Now, the temple is a special house for God. And it's where God's presence would dwell, and where people could go to worship the Lord, where they could go to um, have their sins forgiven. Now, this was before Jesus uh, died and rose again. It's where people would go to be forgiven of their sins. Now, do you remember when we left off a couple months ago, who else wanted to build a temple for God in Israel? Do you remember who that was? If you said David, you would be right. David wanted to build a house for God, but you know what? God told him no, and that's interesting. Sometimes God tells us no. We might want to do a, a project for him and get really excited about it, but God told David no, and he said, I'm going to give you the blueprints, but your son Solomon will be the one to build it. Now, do you know what blueprints are? Have you ever seen blueprints? I have some blueprints here. Here are some blueprints for a project that we're working on at church. And I think these actually might be old, but blueprints have a lot of different measurements and details. And these aren't actually blue, but they used to be blue prints. But a blueprint tells you measurements for things and details, and it's very, very specific. And if you don't follow the blueprints on a building, you can make some big mistakes, and then the building could, could even fall down. So God told David, no, you can't build the temple, but he did give David the blueprints. And David loved God so much, and he accepted no, as is hard to do sometimes, but since he loved God, what he did is he gathered materials for the temple, and the temple was made out of the best materials around. Can you think of the best, most valuable materials th something can be made out of? Often wedding rings are made out of this material. That's right, it's gold. So David gathered gold, he gathered silver, he gathered bronze, he gathered stone, and he brought all this together so that his son, Solomon, could build the temple. Now, when Solomon was reigning for four years, after four years, Solomon sent a letter to a neighboring king named Hiram. Now, Hiram was at, at peace because Solomon was such a wise king, and Hiram uh, was so willing to help Solomon because he knew that God's hand was on Solomon and on the people of Israel. So Solomon and Hiram made a peace treaty, and as part of that treaty, as sometimes kings did, is they exchanged services and goods. So Solomon said, if you give me cypress trees and cedar trees from Lebanon, I'll give you grain and other food and money to hire your workers to cut down those trees and send them in the sea to Israel. Now Hiram said, yes, absolutely. We would love to bless your people and help you with this temple. So Solomon gave to Hiram each year they were building gold for his workers, for the laborers, and grain to feed the people. And this is something he did year after year. So God blessed Solomon and his relationship with the neighboring kings. 
And so Solomon started gathering these materials, and he also gathered a workforce. Now, there were seven, 70,000 laborers that were involved in this project, and 8,000 laborers that worked in the quarry. Now, do you know what a quarry is? A quarry is somewhere where they collect stones, and there were special stones that were collected for the temple, and they were hammered in the quarry. They were not, there was no hammering done on the site where the temple was build, built, and this was out of respect for God and his, and his people. Now, so I don't know if you've ever hammered a stone, but here's a stone, and so they would hammer these stones in the quarry, okay, so that would be the sound, but God told David and Solomon, when you build a temple, we don't want to hear that sound in the location of the temple. So all of the stones were quarried away from the temple and away from where the temple was built. So that was something special. Now, some other things about this temple that was built that were very special is it was made of wood and the whole inside of the temple was coated with gold. And could you imagine how beautiful that would have been reflecting on the gold? Now, there was something else that was special about the temple. It was where they put the Ark of the Covenant. Now, the Ark of the Covenant was where the Ten Commandments were stored, and it was made out of gold as well. And it was where the priest, the high priest, would go once a year to put the blood of the lamb to forgive the people of their sins. It was, the, in, it was put in the most holy place, and it was covered with gold all around. So it was very magnificent. And something else that the temple had was curtains that were woven of fine silks and, and linen with all kinds of wonderful colors. And the whole inside of this temple was made with gold. So it was very, very expensive, very detailed. Something else about the temple is the inside, there were carvings of angels and palm trees all covered with gold. And it was something that took seven years to build, to complete. And everything was perfectly made. Now, when it was all finished, Solomon did something very special. He dedicated the temple. He dedicated the temple. Have you, do you know what the word dedicate means? Have you ever heard that? Sometimes in church we dedicate uh, children uh, to God. The word dedicate means to give it over to God uh, in the worship of God. So Solomon, he bowed before the Lord and he praised God and he prayed and he dedicated the temple and he thanked God and he said, there's no God in heaven above or on earth below that's like you. And at that time, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Now, even though the gold is special and expensive and all those things are great, God's presence in the temple is what made the temple even better. And so God was letting them know he was pleased with what Solomon was doing. And the people worshiped and praised God and they said, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. And they had a 14 day feast. Can you imagine that? It's kind of like when we do potluck, but they did it for 14 days straight and they offered sacrifices to God and they sang songs. And it was just a fabulous time and it was wonderful and God was just blessing Solomon and his people. Now, how does this apply to us? What can we learn about? Well, God's presence and his blessing goes along with us or follows us as we serve him. And I want to read to you 1 Kings 6, 11 through 13. It says this. It says, Then the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning this temple which you are building, if you walk in my statutes, execute my judgments, keep all my commandments, and walk in them, then I will perform my word with you, which I spoke to your father David, and I will dwell among the children of Israel, and will not forsake my people Israel. So this is God's promise. If Solomon kept his commandments, God's commandments, kept his word and followed God closely, then God would be with his people. And that's a promise for us too. If we obey God and follow him, he will bless us. Now, another thing that's important to, to learn here is that this was a temple made of stone and gold. Now, God says that we 
In the New Testament, it says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus came and he died and he rose again, we no longer have to go to the temple, God's, uh, Solomon's temple, to worship. God said that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let's read in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. It says this, Do you not know that you are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwells in you? So, just like the temple was valuable and made of very special items, you are God's temple. You are special to God. And Jesus loves you so much that he came and he died and he rose again to pay for your sins so that you could be filled with God's Spirit and be forgiven and be the temple of God and that he could dwell in you and have fellowship with you. That's how much God loves you. So we don't have Solomon's temple today and we don't really need his temple, but we have God's Spirit living inside of us. And so God is at work in us, making us beautiful, just like that temple. Now, we should take care of our bodies, just like Solomon took care of the temple and spent time and cared for it. And everything that we say and do, our lives should be kind of holy, just like that temple was holy. Another thing, one last thing, is Solomon loved God so much that he had a big dream for God. He wanted to do something big for God and his kingdom. Now, you might have some special thing you want to do for God, and he can work in your life to accomplish that plan, just like he worked in Solomon. So I hope that you have big dreams for God and that, and that someday you want to serve him. Maybe you want to be a missionary, a teacher, a pastor, um, or, or just you know, take care of your family and do a good job at your work or wherever you're at. Those are all very important and big dreams for God. So let's pray right now, and I want to just pray for God to work in your life uh, to build you as the temple of God and to, and to work in your life uh, in the big dreams that you have for him. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Solomon and his wisdom. We thank you that you've made us the temple of your Holy Spirit. And I just pray for my brothers and sisters at home that you would work in, in their lives, perfecting them and working in them and filling them with your presence and just help them to dedicate their lives and themselves to you to serve you. And I pray for the big dreams that they have that they want to serve you, that you would go before them and prepare the way and just help them uh, to be just faithful followers of you, Jesus. And so we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful day and that you love us and that you came and died for us and rose again, uh, that we could have fellowship with you. Uh, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thanks for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Ask and it shall be And ye shall find I can the door shall be open unto you Hallelujah, Alleluia Seek ye first the kingdom of God And his righteousness Thing shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Goodbye, everyone. God bless. We'll see you next time.